On this episode, we explore the flight characteristics of the famed air coup. I've never done this before. I definitely don't like it. I want rudder! <laughs> oh my god, what a f***ing trip! It's like, where's my rudder? Right? <laughs> I, I can feel that moment of, oh f***! <laughs> what do I do now? What is it like to fly an airplane without rudder pedals? We've assembled a crack team of experienced professionals to answer that very question. Five pilots with varying experience levels take to the skies in the air coup. Or is it the scare coup? This airplane is an Alon AL2 with 100 horsepower O200 on it. At one point, one of its claims, of claims to fame is, I think it's the only airplane that was actually sold in the Sears and Roebuck's catalog. This particular airplane is the last one that was built at the Aileron factory without rudder control. The unique thing about an air coupe is the aileron and rudder are interconnected, and you drive it around on your taxi like you would drive a car, rolling the ailerons. Elevator still works the same way that an elevator worked on any other airplane. It's got one pedal on the floor, and that's a big brake bar. It's gonna be a little challenging for me because I'm used to using my feet, and having an airplane with no rudder control. I know as I taxi out, I'm gonna be very aware of, okay, if I turn to the left, the up aileron is going to be on the left, and the down aileron is going to be on the right. It is outside of my comfort zone. I'm used to flying airplanes that are relatively challenging, and I think this one's kind of making me nervous because it's known for not being challenging. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to find new and inventive ways to screw it up. The POH is very similar to most early general aviation airplanes that they relied on you to be pilots and fly the airplane like a pilot. The maximum crosswind component this aeroplane has been demonstrated to be safe for takeoff and landing is 20 knots. The shortest takeoff is ordinarily obtained by holding the control wheel full aft. Awesome. The aircraft under most conditions will not fully stall. That's helpful. There's no warning to the approach to stall apart from gradually less effective aileron control. This is gonna be interesting. I guess it's time to go do this. I can't put it off anymore, right? Or can I? No. Can I? You wanna do this instead? Uh, maybe, I'll decide after you do it. Ah, I see how it is. All right, <laughs> let's go fly. And with that, Daniel is first up to fly. Daniel Watching has thousands of hours of flight time in some of the most coveted and challenging aircraft. He often flies warbirds and he teaches tailwheel and formation flying. Picture's coming, Rich. Walk myself around the cockpit here for a second. He's very experienced, but his accolades don't get in the way of his judgment. Whenever you strap yourself into an unfamiliar airplane, it requires all of your attention and all of your respect. Here we go. Clear front. Ten meters still showing a discharge, but this airplane is equipped with a generator system, so that should be normal. Dev lights are coming on. That gives us our ADSB. Everything's looking good. Well. There's no rudder pedals. Five to drive. For any pilot who has experienced the air coop for the first time, this is the really funny part. <laughs> this is so freaking funny. <laughs> All right, be serious. I mean, already, how do you fly this without having a good time? It turns on a dime. Hilarious. I love it. It drives like a little Italian sports car on the ground. It corners well and has a tight turn radius. As much as we do love cars at airspeed and altitude, this channel is about airplanes, so let's go fly. Our before takeoff checklist is complete, also followed up with regular mnemonics. Let this double check our flight controls are free, correct? And I'm going to maneuver it around a little bit while I do so. Dust. Oh, I can see everything. Done. All right, looks good. Get will traffic. Uh, Air Coop 63 Foxtrot is departing runway 24. Will be a North 270 departure cable. In the interest of time, we've skipped past a very thorough run up and pre flight check. Just take our time. I have a pretty decent boss one coming from the right right now.
There we go. Just driving it down the runway, I'm going through, airspeed's alive, going through about 45 miles per hour. I can feel the gusts. The nose wants to yaw, and it takes a little bit of a counter input to work against it. Off and away, here we go. This is pretty peppy. It actually accelerated fairly quickly through those gusts and stuff, but right now I'm at about 90 miles per hour. I got good oil pressure, good RPM, good ammeter. Airplane looks happy. <laughs> this is just kind of comical. Again, I, I don't know what to do with my feet. Love the visibility. The weird thing for me right now is I can feel the airplane kind of yawing and hunting around. <laughs> Watch it, but you know, every time I hit a little bit of a bump, you just see the ball sliding around. You can really see it off the nose. I think it would be a, just a pure joy to fly on a uh, calm wind day. It's not bad in rough air. Cable yeah, traffic, Air Coop, 6-3 Foxtrot, uh, we're departing north, climbing through 2,500 feet. I really want to fly this again when it's smooth, but I think it's just going to be a joy to fly. This, is, this falls into a lot of the, the quirky airplanes that, that I end up getting around of either love it or you don't. And I think all airplanes are fun. They've all got their place. This could be a, a great airplane to have if it's your only airplane and you just want to go out and go fly, low cost and stuff like that. I'll tell you a lot more after I land in the gusty winds. Um, takeoff was uncomfortable because I wasn't able to do the things that I'm used to doing. But I've also got a lot of tailwheel time. Um, so I'm just kind of, I don't let the airplane do anything other than point the nose straight. Go ahead and we'll give a little bit of nose down trim. This particular airplane with the 100, 100 horsepower engine, it wants to accelerate about to, about to 110 miles an hour. <laughs> oh, this is great. Let's make everybody sick at home. It's pretty responsive. I'm kind of surprised how responsive it is. So I'm up and I do a really crappy lazy eight here. Let's see how the energy kind of works on it. That's pretty good. Up here, do one to the right. I can hear it settling in. To the right, I wish I had a little bit more right rudder. It's fighting me right now as I come across the top of the Lazy 8. And you can see the ball is slid out to the right pretty good. For what it is, I can see why that would happen. The way the airplane's rigged and such. Back at Cable Airport, our friend Chris couldn't let Daniel have all that fun by himself. I spotted my little eye a Stearman. Gosh, I wish I had rudder pedals right about here, but it's only because I'm getting kind of into the fine-tuned ways that I usually cheat when flying around my friends. <laughs> Dude, you can't wait till you fly it. Chris will, in fact, fly the air coop in the next episode. <laughs> no, it's just me being kind of resistant to it. It's just, you can feel the nose wants to hunt every time you bring up the halo on. It's just kind of goofy. So as I'm getting closer to you, I'm a little bit slower to react. So I think the airspeed indicator's got some air in it because it's saying we're doing 100 miles an hour. Um, yeah, I know that.
that's German. Or not. Okay, crossing over to your right. Okay. Do you mind uh, just getting to the back of the frame? I'm going to take the lead for a second. go in and uh, scare myself on landing. Actually, I'm going to stall it first or attempt that, and then I'm going to go scare myself. <laughs> See ya. See ya. Now, the airplane's not supposed to stall. That's its big claim to fame. It's supposed to be a safe airplane for everybody because they can't get themselves in trouble. Pretty sure you can get yourself in trouble. Every time an engineer says, yeah, we're going to make this airplane so it's pilot-proof, pilots figure out new and inventive ways to, to screw things up. Hey, car Pete's on, coming back on throttle. It's goopy right here. Just feels odd. Bull doesn't stall. That was a nice little burble. If I just relax the yoke. I got the burble and then I got the nose drop only because I didn't want to horse it in there. But straight ahead, it did its job, it didn't drop an aileron or anything. Cool. I mean, pretty much as advertised. I can see where somebody might be able to try to get themselves into like a whip stall in it or something, but yeah, pretty straight ahead. Well, well why don't we go do some pattern work with it? And Scare Coop uh, 63 Foxtrot is left base 24 Kibble. Yeah, that's right, I said Scare Coop because I'm starting to get scared right now. Airplane looks good. All engine gauges are in parameters. Car beats on. I approach initially at 90 only because I don't necessarily trust the airspeed indicator on this. The owner said, yeah, try, try 90. The manual is. Um, I'd say it's big, but that's overstating, or that's uh, that's giving it a little bit of uh, credit. I don't have any feet on anything, and so I'll clear the brakes, obviously. Now I've lined up the runway. I got about 15 degrees off the nose. Carburetor heat is off. On approach, say 85. This is where it gets kind of dicey for me. I was all the way back. This is where it's really weird. Like, I just want to drive the aileron down and kick the nose straight with my feet. And I just don't know what to do here. Jesus. <laughs> there we go. Let's go try that again. That wasn't scary enough. Let's do it again. Weird and a half. I'm sweating not because I'm nervous. It's actually just because it's probably like a million and a half degrees in here. Um, Try to get some airflow going. But I'll tell you what, that last little bit, to say it's uncomfortable for me is an understatement. Um, I'm just not used to, and I think it just comes down to you gotta get comfortable with it. I'm not used to driving it on the ground in a crab. And you can feel every gust. And 63 Fox Trot is turning left across one for two four cable. It's really not bad until you get down where you want fine-tuning, and that's when it gets weird. I watched you on your last touchdown. I was like, oh, let it, let it. No, it can't. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> that's what I was saying, too. Shut up and die like a man, right? Yep. In the steerman or something like that, I'd be freaking out. I'm steering the airplane down the runway. Weird, here we go. I just want to push right rudder. <laughs> I mean, you know, because you gotta. So yeah, I think I might be holding the nose on the ground a little bit too long because it's somewhat stable. And then it gets to uh, where you should be unsticking the airplane from the ground. And it just gets wonky. And it's real easy to want to walk your ailerons. And you can see as I walk the ailerons out here, the airplane 
It's uncoordinated, gets ugly, gets rough. It just isn't happy. And Scarecoop 63 Foxtrot is left across 124 cable. And Air Coop 63 Foxtrot is turning final for 24, attempting full stop 24 cable. I say attempting only because I, really if I don't feel comfortable on it, I am going around. Now the winds are straightening out. The airplane works as a great windsock. Wow. Wow, that was weird. Wow. The crosswind's coming from the right side. Why am I putting a left air on? Well, the airplane wants the weather vane to the right. But it's against everything that I know to be steering to the left with a crosswind, a strong gusty crosswind from the right. This is where it becomes uncomfortable. Kind of makes me nervous. Makes me want to laugh, but it's just weird. I'm gonna go do that one more time. It's funny to watch that ball slide side to side just like you got a brand new student pilot in here. This airplane's been flying for, you know, 60 years or better. Hasn't figured out how to keep the ball centered yet. I'm sorry, airplane, you've been doing awesome. Cable traffic, uh, air coop is downwind for 2-4, will be, uh, option on this pass will be a uh, low approach uh, only for uh, touch go. Hey, getting ourselves lined up the runway. This is where we're going to start seeing how the wind has an effect on our airplane. Right now, the nose is pointed about 5 degrees to the right, maybe a little bit more. If I was in a 172 with a student, I wouldn't be terribly nervous. If I was in a 170, I'd be constantly correcting them. Let's just drive it down the runway here. So the wind's going straight down the runway, and then you can take it's a little change. It's kind of straightening out a little bit better than it was on the previous approach. Huh. Well, at least the winds are starting to go more down the runway. Hey, Kip Traffic. Uh, Air Coop 63 Foxtrot turning left base, 24 cable, full stop. Try not to get too crazy here. Wow. That vernier throttle kind of. Wow, look at that. Now we're getting better wind. Wow. <laughs> it's absolutely freaking hilarious. I, again, I gotta fly this thing when the winds are smooth, or when the winds are calm. <laughs> it's just so freaking hilarious, man. Just absolutely hilarious. Uh. This this is unique. It's, I don't know how best to describe it. It's weird. It's weird in some fun ways. I think if it was a wind calm day, it'd feel like flying a Piper Cherokee around uh, that you can see everywhere. And the visibility is awesome. On a bumpy day, every time that I'd get a, uh, I'd get a little wing lift excited by a bump, um, the nose would want to start swinging. As you're landing, you can see where the winds are gusting. You know, it's predominantly out of the out of the right on landing, and so the nose would would go and then would kind of move over a little bit. Uh, and you just had to channel it in your brain, like, no, I just got to let the airplane yaw all at once, and then let it touch down. Then on rollout, that was the weirdest thing. Was I could feel I had a lot of crosswind rolling out on one of them and I had to drive the aileron the opposite way that my brain tells me to. Like, I'm rolling out, and I know in every other airplane I've ever flown in my life, I better drive that, that right aileron into the ground um, and keep the nose tracking with the rudder. This, I'm having to drive the left aileron only so I can get nose wheel steering to keep the airplane going straight down the runway, or it wanted to pull over to the, to the right. 
again, a unique experience. I don't know another airplane that you could go fly this and do this and get this experience out of it. Absolutely hilarious. Go get your Sears and Roebuck magazine or catalog and go order one today because, you know, you need to do this. And this concludes part one. Have you ever flown an air coop? Tell us about it in the comments. If you like what you see so far, subscribe, give us a like, and click that little notification bell in the corner. See you in part two of the Scare Coop on airspeed and altitude.